Hello. 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 Okay, it's recording, and we'll see if I could hear you without even having it on you. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Chandler, do you have titanium up with the slides? All right, everybody, how are we? Hello? How are we? Really? That's it? It's a Monday. We're starting our week. All right, you ready to have fun tonight? Yes. Okay, about 12 people are. <laughs> Last week, what, when you left the gym, I'm going to make sure all of you have smiles on your face before we leave here tonight and go over there. But what was one thing that you just left going, oh my gosh, that was so fun or that was crazy. Or, I mean, we have video. We can prove what, what was fun. <laughs> um, but think to yourself, and then I want you just to do a pair share and turn and t tell someone there was so much laughter going on last week. That was crazy. Uh, and, I, and I went home and I bragged about it. But let's see if you have some of the same responses. So turn and talk to someone about something you found that was fun and refreshing last week in the um, dance room. Triangle tag. I knew you were say that. I hated tigers. I hated tigers. I did. <gasps> and we can just minimize it for now. Yeah, that's good. Um. Time. So, who can? Um, I got the response from this group like immediately. <laughs> triangle tag. How many of you it was triangle tag? I tell you, you, wait till you see this video. I'm sure it's going to be put on that website. It is great. Okay, if I have to see myself and I really recognize, I mean, I know I'm short, but I really didn't recognize how short I was. Um, and I, I videotape uh, all my methods classes with the elementary methods, the secondary methods, uh, student teaching. They, we videotape all of their teaching, so I got to explain to them that I was actually in their shoes for a change. And, um, so that was really good. What else besides triangle tag? What else? What else made an impression that was actually something fun about moving last week? I'll just wait. I think what made it so fun is that like it's something that we haven't done in a really long time, and it, like for me, like brought me back to like playground days and stuff. Okay, something you hadn't you haven't done in a long time. Okay, who missed out on that? So I know how many people. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. Ah, you have to watch the video. It was a blast. We had so much fun. The good thing is that tonight we're in the big gym, and we're actually going to pull out some equipment. Our schedule is that I'm going to um, review some locomotor, non-locomotor, and manipulative ideas in here tonight. I have developed my final um, test questions. Dr. Chandler has them. And then we're going to review, um, uh, we're going to actually go over the Chapter 4 fitness slides. How many of you have looked at Chapter 4 in your reader? How many of you have not? Okay, and how many have not even looked at the PowerPoint slides posted on Titanium? How many have looked at the PowerPoint slides on titanium? Okay, gives me a judge of, and a range of where to, where to go with it. Uh, we will not be going all over all 51 slides, but you have a huge resource that you can pull from wherever you're at. I'm going to hit some key things. Again, I'm taking a semester class and kind of putting it into three nights. Um, 
for you. After I'm done here, we'll head over to the big gym. I'm going to continue with some fitness ideas. Then you're going to work into your lesson plans. You're going to be teaching to a small group of about 20 people. Okay, I'll take the gym, I'll coordinate off. Um, before I leave here, you're going to do a self-grade on your lesson plan template. We're going to discuss it. I'm going to ease some of your tension tonight. Okay, um, let's start with that. On your lesson plan sheet, one of the things is that I want to take all of them, scan them, and post them on titanium. So you have each other's, even if they're duplicates, but you have each other's ideas. So it needs to be written out on the template, um, the template format, but as clear as can be that anyone in here can, can, can teach from it. So how long did we play Fastest Tag in the West last week? How long did we actually play one segment of it? About eight to 10 seconds. So put that in. Play eight to 10 seconds, unfreeze everybody, repeat, play again. When we played um, Jack Frost, Jane Thaw, we had taggers. We played for about 20 seconds. We froze and handed the uh, flag or created additional taggers. Was anybody ever sitting around? No, everybody was always moving. But the key thing is that I want you to write these up to the point where it's got a diagram and a boundary. I'm going to give you some time tonight to hand draw those um, so that Again, you could give them to Dr. Chandler and she could teach them to her Girl Scout troop. All right? She will make them practical. So. All right, some of you are just like, I don't know what's going on. Bear with me. You'll have fun tonight. All right, if I give you a quiz right now of locomotor movements, who can tell me um, at least one? I'm going to ask for all uh, seven locomotor movements. Let's see. Give me one. Running is one. Walking. Walking. Jumping. Jumping. One feet or two? One. Two, two ten times. <coughs> Skipping. <coughs> Hopping. How many feet? One foot. How many times before you switch? Three. 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 H O P. Galloping. Galloping. Sliding. Sliding like a basketball player as opposed to a baseball player, softball player. Okay, our favorite one, I had somebody demonstrate for me. Leap. Leap. All right, take off on one foot, land on the other foot, hands are out to the side. I think we got them all. Okay, non-locomotor. Thousand point quiz right here, non-locomotor. How would you define it? Bending. Bending. Stretching. Stretching. Twisting. Twisting. Do your feet move from one spot to another? No. no. Turning. Okay, and pushing. What about manipulatives? Throwing, catching, kicking, shooting, throwing. Okay, so we're, we're pretty good on that. Don't know what that is, but we'll figure that out. Okay, here goes. How many of you know what MVPA is? MVPA. If you looked at the slides, you saw it. We're in the fitness part right now. MVPA. It's something that you want to make sure you have every day and you have at least 60 minutes of it, children and adults. A minimum of 60 minutes. What is MVPA? Yes. Okay, it's moderate to vigorous physical activity. So right now, you are not in the vigorous or moderate range of physical activity. If we quantified it, uh, or even if we just said yes or no, a yes mm -hmm. is standing, because you're using energy to stand. Um, standing, walking, jogging, or moving quickly. So anything past sitting down or lying down. So the only two no's of that you're not in MVPA, moderate to vigorous physical activity, is sitting or lying down. Well, what do most people do during the day? Whether you're at school or on a weekend with really great football games or something on, what do you do for the most part? Sit. Kind of sit. So is that, would you be an MVPA or no? No. 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 So in MVPA, you need to have, uh, it's a standing, a walking, or a running type movement. When you park really super far away, you're walking to class. It doesn't matter 
how fast you're walking, you're accumulating minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity. Now sure, if I'm walking like this, I'm only going to burn a certain number of calories versus walking really fast. I'm doing this just so Dr. Chandler's held accountable for moving the camera. <laughs> All right, so what they found in the research is that they're looking for people to accumulate the minutes. And they're calling anything above a walk, a stand to a walk, is moderate to vigorous physical activity. 60 minutes. You need at least 60 minutes every day. It doesn't mean continuous. It used to be you had to get those 60 in continuous. Now you can park across the street, walk over, it takes you 20 minutes to walk, and then you walk over to get some Jamba Juice or coffee, and that's another 10 minutes, so you have 30 minutes. Then you walk back to your car, you have 30, 40, 50 minutes. So it's not that hard in one day if you go to school at Cal State Fullerton and park really far away to accumulate your 60 minutes. That's minimum. That's just minimum. That's just to maintain where you're at. Well, for children, they have a natural urge to move. They're growing really quick. So you want to make sure that they're getting enough uh, movement every single day. So those games we played last week, they all, they all uh, encourage movement. And you could hear from the laughter, you could hear, watch from the smiles that you were having fun. So just imagine kids, they're going to have fun. They don't want to hear long directions. They want to boom, 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 I want to play. Most of the time, they're like, I know how to play. I know, I know that game. Don't worry, let's just play. And then they're like, oh, wait, how do you play this? And then sometimes as adults, we talk way too much. We just need to engage them in quick activity. So chapter four in the elementary methods book for classroom teachers is called Exercise Concepts and Fitness Instruction. So fitness education is really part of movement education. As kids are growing, as adults are aging, we want to keep moving to keep the range of motion in our joints working, the flexibility working, um, to burn calories that we're taking in and calories that we're I'm gonna make expelling. I can do that. I will interrupt you. I'm, I'm moving. <laughs> Is that better? That's All right, so fitness ed education really emphasizes physical activity. In here, we've not talked about physical education, where we're educating about movement skills, movement strategies, both the cognitive and the psychomotor, the movement and the uh, knowledge. We're talking mostly about physical activity. When you're in your internships next semester, hopefully there's a piece of the physical activity component that you can carry in. So we're looking at physical activity and some physical fitness that we're, we'll go over to a healthy and productive quality of life. So here's some jump roping. If I asked you on a test, five minutes of jumping rope without stopping, equals running how far? Who knows? It's not a test question, I just was asking you. <laughs> Who knows? Who would, who's brave enough to take a guess? Five minutes of jumping rope is the same as running how far? In the back. One mile. All right? Okay, is that not motivating for kids? Because they can go to the dollar store, get a jump rope, jumping five minutes. That's pretty hard. Same as running one mile. Would you rather run a mile around the track four times or jump rope for, for five minutes? Jump rope. Yeah, I'd rather jump rope too. <laughs> All right. Uh, I have a quick question about the jump roping. When you do that, do you have to do two feet or can you do the gallop and the jump rope? You can alternate feet as long as you're moving. As long as you're moving. Everybody, show me how big your heart is. All right, Any, everybody know it's the same size as your fist. Some people aren't showing me your fist. All right, this is pretty intriguing to, to kids because you have a fist and you teach them, hey, do you know that your heart's as big as your fist? Now go home and see if, how big your parent's heart is. All right, okay, their fist is like this big and then you know, one of their parents is gonna be a lot bigger. And this whole concept of 
This is a muscle. Open and close your, your hand. Keep going. I'm going to talk just for one minute. Your heart is a muscle that never stops beating. Okay, so your heart's more like this. But I'm just going to ask you to open and close your hand just like this for right now. We're waving to you for coming in late. <laughs> I won't put you on the spot. All right, so we want to keep this muscle going. We don't ever want to stop. Some of our hearts have stopped. All right, we're worried about you. Keep your, <laughs> keep it going, keep it going. Okay, relax, that was 20 seconds. Our heart never stops. We have to be physically active for our heart muscle to be strong. You have to teach kids that. Sure, their hearts automatically beat, but we have to educate them on, or even the aging population, because they'll be going to sites, Dr. Chandler, across the lifespan. In what class? In the internship in spring, will they be going across the lifespan? Yeah, yes. So, you know, my, my parent, my, one of my parents is 79 years old. He works out twice a week with a personal trainer. He wants to make sure his heart stays strong. In fact, it, go, it gets too high, when, then he has to go ahead and calm it down. So be careful that you're not prescribing anything, but that you just want to keep, keep movement going to keep your heart um, increased. All right, a giraffe's heart is the size of what? Here is your hand. It's this type of season right now, it just started. Last year they were on strike. It was wonderful because it was short season. It's not hockey. Um, a giraffe's heart is the size of, somebody take a step, come on. Raise your hand if you can tell me. Somebody said it. Basketball. basketball. A giraffe's heart is the size of a basketball. Okay, is that not intriguing? Would kids not get excited about that? All right. Okay. What about, I'm aging myself, Lassie, a collie, a dog, a big dog, like a German shepherd. Their heart is the size of what? A tennis ball. And a rat? How big is a rat's heart? That's, you knew that, huh? Or did you just guess it? Okay, go buy a lottery ticket quick. <laughs> All right, it's the size of a pea. Find exciting things that turn your kids on to, to wanting to learn about being physically active. They go home, they share that. How cool is that? You become the star. All right, I got smiles on your faces. I know, you're like, all right. So in your resources for my module, you have the California framework, and it's a PDF file, and it has standards of what students need to know and be able to do. Know and be able to do by the end of that grade level. Well, we have something called the national standards that are very broad. Children should move. In California, we wrote them to, students will be able to identify different activities that are aerobic. Are aerobic. Okay, that's a first grader. In sixth grade, students will be able to identify um, the biomechanical principles to increase force on an overhand throw. How cool would that be if your sixth grade physical education class that you took, you were learning about biomechanical principles to increase force so that when you're playing, you're in the rec center or you're playing in a softball league or basketball, you know how your body works to make yourself a more efficient mover. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make our kids feel successful and be efficient movers. All right, so our national standards is that uh, individuals exhibit a physically active lifestyle and maintains a health enhancing uh, level of fitness. It takes six weeks to build up a fitness level. It takes two weeks to break it all down. Six weeks to build up, two weeks to break it down. Next week, I'm gonna tie in some nutrition facts. I'm gonna show you some visual demonstrations of how much um, sugar is in a can of Coke, how much salt, you know, is in whatever we, we bring in. Okay, things that are also gonna help educate your kids to how, much, how many calories are you actually burning. We don't really wanna go into that too much. We just wanna get the kids excited, intrinsically excited about moving. Okay. Am I doing, am I selling you on it yet? Oh, we're being quiet again. Okay, cardiorespiratory function, also known as cardiovascular endurance. It, cardio, what does this mean? Show me what this means. Show me. Okay, a couple people have it. My front rows need it. What does cardio mean? Cardio. So you're showing me your heart. Respiratory, show me what your respiratory is. Keep your heart going. Okay, we got lots of germs going through here right now. So we have a cardio, it's a heart and lung activity. 
all right? We want to keep our heart beating quicker and we need to breathe um, so we have a heart and lung activity. And endurance is over time. They use the word function, but it's cardiovascular endurance. Cardiorespiratory endurance is what I use with students. Body composition is a health-related fitness component. Muscular strength. Being able to push up this table, lift up this table one time, that's showing me how much strength I have. Endurance would be how many times can I lift it up. And then flexibility is a range of motion. In the, in the uh, framework that is that PDF file I'm referring to, there's a glossary. So if you're needing some help next semester, you can always email me. But there's a huge glossary that has all of these terms broken down. All right, so flexibility. If you don't have flexibility, injuries are going to, um, to rise pretty quick. Okay, kids are super flexible. There's mixed notions of should you warm up first, then stretch, and then work out, or do you stretch, warm up, work out? Dancers are going to have one idea, gymnasts having another idea, so you do what's best for you. Okay, kids, kids are so flexible, you can have them just do light, warm up, stretching, and get into activity. All right, everybody take your hand, reach behind. Take this hand, reach behind. Can you touch? Try the other side. Some of you are yawning and touching. Okay. Can you do it? One side. Both sides. All right, if you're able to do both sides, you just passed the um, upper body fitness test for the state of California in grades five, seven, and nine. All right, just the upper body. That's one of the six tests. <laughs> okay, so look at these. Look at the health related, okay? Kind of just do a quick memory of these. Now we're going to look at skill related. Speed, agility, strength, explosive power, coordination. The genetics play a huge role in this. We don't have a lot of say on how fast. You can be fast, but you can only be as fast as your genetics allow you to be fast. So these are things that you can improve, but you already have, have a genetic disposition. Whereas if we go back, so this is called skill-related fitness. If we go back to health-related, these are things that everybody can improve on. The fitness gram for the states, for the United States now, it shows levels of improvement. It says you're either in the zone or you're not in the zone, you're, you're at high risk for not being in the zone. So no longer does it compare you and me. We compare, we're compared against our own selves on that. All right, everybody stand up real quick. All right, I need you to reach across your body and then reach across the other side of your body and put one leg up and reach down and see if you can touch your elbows to the knee. Okay, try it on the other side. Reach across, reach across, lift your knee. Can you touch both elbows? Okay, have a seat. Why did I just do this? What did I teach you last week about why we just did that? Okay, Dr. Chandler knows. <laughs> Tell me. You remember? Is it? Uh, Kinda. It has something. Who remembers why we want to cross over the midline of our body? Increases brain activity. Okay, it's like putting miracle grow in the head, in the brain, which is in your head. All right. So as I see some of you, the heads are nodding right now. It's kind of a warm room in here. So I'm going to have, I have my students stand up at various times and I'm crazy, sure, but I'm going to keep you awake. All right, um, so here's the definition of fitness versus activity. This is, um, fitness is what you need to, cre to perform physical activity where physical activity is any body movement that you're doing basically beyond um, uh, uh, resting level. So resting level, would, is this MVPA or not MVPA? 
N not MVPA. Okay, watch your, your heads. I'm going to go through this pretty quick because we're just going to... Okay, risk factors. Um, if we don't stay physically active, we can get heart disease, diabetes. Um, there's just a range of different things. You have to maintain being physically active. Again, you're going to have all of these in your, um, in your notes for next semester. So the human body and activity. You're going to, you might be at an establishment that you need to educate the kids of why do, why do they want to be active. They want to play on the video games. They want to play on the computers. Well, you have to come up with a way of telling them, explaining to them that the engine for activity is the cardiovascular system. All right, so what... How could you change that around right now? What is the engine? What do you think of when you think of engine? Somebody give me an idea. I have one, but... A car. So maybe when you start your car, it keeps going. If it doesn't keep going, you don't make it to school. Then life's not good because you don't pass your classes. What else for an engine? Train. I'm totally thinking of a train, too. The train is... Boom, 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 boom. It keeps going. Think of a fable. I think it's a fable. Um, there's a real famous one that the engine is something that just keeps going. And it's tortoise and the hare, okay? Just, I don't know if that's a fable or not. But the tortoise just keeps going, just keeps engaged the whole time. The hare is going, stopping, going, stopping. And who ends up winning? The tortoise, the one that just keeps going. Apparatus for activity, that's our muscular system. And then the vehicle for activity is the way that we're, our bodies are made. All right, everybody is different, every single person. You're gonna have little kids. Um, right now, I work at a school in downtown Los Angeles, um, and I have a sixth grader who's about 4'2", and I have a sixth grader that is about 5'9", five 5'10". Five okay? I can't pair those two together, but I have to figure out how do I create movement ac activities and experiences that engage both of them. All right? So just because they're in the same grade or the same age, there can be a five to six year developmental difference with kids. Five to six years younger, five to six years older. Now, if you're going to be at places where, um, you know, the kids are, you, you've got to think about the emotional development of the kids, too. What have they gone through? Just because they're a five-year-old doesn't mean they're kindergarten ready. You know, boys develop a little slower than girls. You have to be able to gauge the physical activity, how to get them engaged in developmentally appropriateness. You wouldn't play a game that I played with you and saying, okay, you could do this at the high school level or the kindergarten class. So you have to do developmentally appropriateness. So that's why on your lesson plan temp template, you have a grade level or age level. All right, so then you have slides that will break down the cardiovascular system. These are great activities that you can take through. You can even create a heart um, uh, maze that you have the kids walk through. Okay, aerobic and anaerobic. Anaerobic is without oxygen. Um, you're doing it really fast, sprinting, basketball, soccer, aerobic. You're, you're walking, jogging, swimming. You're actually extending aerobic time of increasing the heart functioning over time versus anaerobic where it's a quick burst. All right, so MVPA, moderate to vigorous physical activity, at least 60 minutes or more each day. These guidelines, they're pretty low still. Moderate intensity is where the heart and breathing rate are increased, but the exercise is aerobic and easily tolerated, generally continuous, and can be sustained. So can you walk from here to the Kines building without having to stop? All right, so that's, that's moderate. Uh, for some, it could be vigorous as well. 
All right, vigorous is heart rate is increased more than moderate. Breathing becomes fast. Exercise may be anaerobic without oxygen. Generally cannot be sustained for very long. Provides excellent stimulus for the heart, lungs, muscles, and vascular system to improve, thereby increasing fitness levels. Okay, and then this is just going to take you through uh, the muscular system, flexibility, the different body types. Three different body types. There's the ectomorph, mesomorph, and endomorph. We are all have this uh, genetically predisposed. So you can see someone that is a very skinny, skinny person. Doesn't matter that how much they eat, how much they work out, they're going to stay at that, I, that, this ectomorph. I have a nephew that I think I might have mentioned to you. He's 17 years old, he's 5'8", and he's 110 pounds. He cannot gain weight. He cannot increase his inch size on his waist. That's huge for a boy. He wants to be the mesomorph, and he can't get there. He, this is his body type. Mesomorph, a little bit more on the muscular side. I give him somewhat of a little six pack on that one. And then the endomorph is just the bigger body. So just be aware that there's three different types of body composition. Okay, then we have something very cool. You can go to myplate.com um, and they have the physical activity um, pyramid. This is not what I want. Um, we're, we're using the plate now, but we have a physical activity um, pyramid that shows you the amount of uh, different types of physical activity throughout the day. And if you write to the Dairy Council, they will give you free materials um, towards whatever grade level you're at. It's just uh, CaliforniaDairyCouncil.com. Okay, we're not going to go into any of this. I think that was it. Okay, so you want to motivate your kids your adults, whoever you're working with next semester. The whole role of module four is to educate you that it's important to get whoever you're working with engaged in some type of physical activity. If you're at a senior center, it's getting them, even if they're sitting in a chair, to move their arms up. Everybody move your arms up. We're gonna move them up and down for 30 seconds. Ready, go. 30 seconds. Up and down, you can cross them over. Go up, show me your biceps, show me your biceps. Okay, and turn the light bulbs. We're using our deltoids. These are our deltoids. These are the muscles that you use to throw with or raise your hand in class. Okay, you can turn the front door, the doorknobs, still our deltoids. Okay, we have 10 more seconds. Show me your biceps again. All right, and stop. So even if you have older adults, they can be sitting in chairs doing that. You can add resistance. How might I want to add resistance? Okay, I can take paper plates, paper plates adding resistance. Okay, even with kids um, that are, are low functioning, we can use that as well. So serve as a role model, all right? Okay, so that ends my part on this. So let me take you through what I need to with your lesson plan. So pull your lesson plan out. And on your lesson plan, we're going to do a couple different things. You're going to self-grade your lesson plan. And I added, since it's worth 75 points, I, I came up with a grade sheet. You're going to um, draw on your lesson plan um, a diagram or boundaries where it's safe. So if, if I was using a triangle tag, I would have, uh, you know, three X's and then another um, X out here and to show, and then another three X's, another X, or you might have four X's depending on your group size, but it would show the distance between groups for safety, right? Um, and the boundaries also deals with safety as well, right? So please make sure that you add the boundaries or diagrams right now on your lesson plan because I didn't give that to you before. You're going to self-grade your sheet right now. That was more for the camera stuff of me shrugging. 
Okay, objective for lesson. What is it that you want your students to learn? When I had you play triangle tag, what was the whole message of triangle tag? Here's three people. What are they trying to do with this one person? They're trying to protect them. They're trying to protect that person. It's not just a tag game. You change what it's about. It's about responsibility today. It's about being responsible to protect this person from getting tagged. Okay? So your objective, what is your goal for what you want your students to learn? Anticipatory set. That's just how you're introducing the activity. So maybe here with triangle tag again, I'll say how many of you have ever, like you know about um, what happens when somebody bullies somebody? Anybody ever hear of somebody bullying somebody? No one in here? Seriously. Raise your hand. Okay, Dr. Chandler's one, two. You, you've heard about, there's a big push right now. A lot of people are being bullied in schools. It's finally coming to attention, all right? So in triangle tag, they're being protected from the bully who's trying to tag them. My anticipatory set opens the door to what I want my students to learn, to protect each other, okay? Direct instruction. My instructions are written out so clear, even bulleted. They don't need to be complete sentences, just bulleted out. Quickly get the students into groups of four. Three will connect hands, one will be the tagger. Or get them into groups of five, four holding on. I wouldn't go much more than four people in triangle tag, one tagger. On signal, or the group uh, decides who they're going to protect, they let the tagger know, they inform the tagger when to start, and the tagger tries to tag two rules, you may not go underneath, over or over the top. Three rules, no body contact, except for a tag. If you get tagged, repeat the same process without rotating anyone, or the teacher signals 20 seconds and rotate. The tagger becomes part of the circle. The person that was just protected becomes a tagger and keep rotating. Quick, 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 quick instructions. Okay, so how does that differ from engaged instruction and activity? Once I have the triangle tag being played, I'm walking around giving feedback. Looking great, great job, you're, you're protecting everyone. Sometimes, depending on the group, like our demonstration group, you remember how I wanted them right here in the center but they kind of started migrating all over the room. So as a teacher, my engaged instruction is to go ahead and try and keep them in their own personal space in, within the general space area so they're not running into other groups. Whatever feedback you can give your students, encouraging them, um, highlighting the locomotor movements, changing up the locomotor movements. Modifications. Modification of triangle tag. I might add a fourth person. I could say that this person on the outside can only slide like a basketball player to try and tag them. Modifications could be as simple as changing up the locomotor and non-locomotor activities or manipulatives. Tonight we'll play with some objects. So it might be if we're doing throwing and catching, the modification might be using yarn balls, uh, tennis balls, soft softballs. So modifying the equipment as well. The assessment. The assessment for you um, is going to be just mostly observational. You know what? This group isn't getting it on, on the triangle tag. So I'm going to go ahead, stop them, get them going again. So have a plan of action about your assessment. Most of you is going to be circulating around and giving feedback and finding out if the students are learning. You might ask them a couple questions. What was the purpose of triangle tag? to protect someone. That goes in closely with the reflective closure. You might even have some of the similar questions or same questions between your assessment questions to check for understanding or, or reflective closure. The reflective closure gives you feedback on what your students learned. If they just said, oh, we had a blast. We didn't, no, we didn't protect them. We like actually had the person help get tagged. <laughs> then I know it's time to revisit that and uh, to clarify um, maybe my instructions weren't very clear. And then the diagrams, you're just drawing that so that you could give this game, it, like tonight, you give this game to somebody in your group, can they teach right from it? What's missing? 
what needs to be added to it. All right, so on lesson plan one, quickly give me a couple comments that you have. Uh, again, if you don't have anything, now is the time to add it to your lesson plan sheet. Now is the time to add it. So I don't want to see any zeros on the lesson, on the self grading. If you have a zero, add it to your lesson plan template. Yes. Sure. Um, that's how you want to find out, have the kids be reminded what they learned. So you have specific questions. Um, you know, what strategies did you use to protect that person when you play triangle tag? And then they'll say, oh, we moved around. But you're having the kids realize what they learned. <laughs> let me make that to the whole class. All right, one, one comment real quick. On the reflective closure, let me provide a little bit more clarity. So using the triangle tag and on the reflective closure, I'm gonna bring my group in, it might be a small group, it depends on who I'm teaching. Um, I'm gonna bring them all in and say, okay, what, you were to protect the person today, what strategies did you use or what, what did you do to protect that person from getting tagged? All right, and they're gonna say, well, we moved around, we moved as a group, we moved as a team. The reflective closure, it's reflective for the student to learn to realize what they learn. It's reflective for the students to realize what they learned. They weren't just playing a game, but they learned something. Maybe they learned that physical activity can be fun while they were exercising their body. So the reflective closure are specific questions that you design that you might ask your students. Did you like that? Was that fun today? What was frustrating about that? Oh, I couldn't tag the person. Okay, great. So you couldn't tag the person because they were, oh, they were really protecting the other person. So have them bring in that, even if you're gonna go in to towards the bullying thing. Okay, question up here? Somebody had a question? Um, if I don't have any equipment, but I did include like cones to just set the boundaries, yeah. and we just add them? Yeah, to absolutely. If for equipment, add cones for boundaries. Okay. This is your time to add whatever you need to add. Cones are great because sometimes you're out on the big field and unless you put cones out, they're gonna run all over the place. Your tag game is now the size of a football field. Okay, another question, because it's probably somebody else's question. Yes? Oh, um, for the references, do we need to mm. like, go into detail or just put in like, the website? Just put in the link. If I'm gonna play your game, I wanna know where I can get some more information on it. Now, most tag games, you might have gotten from somebody at the YMCA. You might have gotten from a childhood game. Then you're going to reference yourself. Yes? It's not, it doesn't have to be a tag game. No, no, we're just, I keep picking on triangle tag because that's what we did last week. Yeah. It's a movement activity, no drills, no relays. Those, those were the only requirements. Everybody active. Okay, what other questions do you have? Is your game ready to go? Your physical activity ready to go? You give it to Cameron and Cameron's going to teach from it? Is it super clear? Change up something. Yes? So the first one can't have any materials or the second Yes, and you'll see the equipment tonight. I'm sorry? Sure. Like, what are you thinking of? A flower? Absolutely. Like a flower? Just flower. Oh, is it going to get all over the gym? Are we going to be outside? No, we're inside the gym. No, please don't bring flower. What do you need? Yeah. Yes. What about a disc? Yeah, I have a whole room full of discs. So I'll show you what the equipment is tonight that you have to use. You weren't here last week, were you? Yeah, you missed a great, great evening. Okay, any other questions? Yes? Yeah, anticipatory set just sets the stage. How do you want to get your kids motivated and excited about what they're going to do? So for triangle tag I used, how many of you, you know, ever somebody bullies you? Okay, well, we're going to protect that person from being bullied. 
I'm using that lightly. I'm not going any technical stuff. Okay, any last questions? How many feel like they just got 75 out of 75 on here from adding what you needed? I need you to be at 75 out of 75. I have a third of the class raised in their hand. So where do we need, what do we need to do to get the rest of the class at 75? What do you need to have for 75? This whole group back here. I want success. Raise your hand if you have 75. Okay, I still have this group over here. Why are you not at 75? What can we do for you? Are you at 75? Yeah? Well, then raise your hand. Okay. Are you at 75? In the orange? Yes? It's almost there? Okay, can I help you with something? Because it's probably someone else's question. Okay, the assessment. So I see my students playing triangle tag. What, what do I, by observing them playing triangle tag, they're doing it, they're, work, they're in their own space. That's my observation. My assessment is pretty high that they've got it. So it's an observational assessment. Are they getting what you want them to get? Are they learning what you want them to learn? We're not going through formal assessment tools. I'm just asking you to do observation. If they're not getting it, then I'm going to come up to this whole group and, and help them out. Right now, I'm doing an assessment by you just raising your hand. How many got 75? I find out a couple people don't. What can I do to try and help them? OK. So show me who said 75. If you could, how many would give, you eight, give yourselves 80? All right, very cool. All right, um, so here's the new, the new thing. We're, we've decided that we're going to only have one lesson plan due. This is your learning lesson plan. Whatever you need to do to fix this, fix it. Next week, you're going to have a lesson plan. It has to be a different one. It can be modified. It could be somebody from a different group. Um, you're allowed to have equipment. Tonight we're going to use equipment. I'll show you what the equipment is. Tonight you're still teaching this to a small group. I'm just not collecting them. Okay. Next week you're turning in this sheet along with your second lesson plan. So you're going to grade your second lesson plan. Okay. Sound like a deal? Grade it before coming to class. If I'm doing it, I'm going to make sure I have all the points. Like, I mean, like all the areas that I'm missing. Yes. Yes. Because the whole idea is that you're walking away from module four with two activities to teach. I'm going to scan all of these, and you're going to have 66 other ones plus yours. So I'll scan next week's lesson plan. Yes. Okay, yeah, that's a great question. Next week, I'm only going to score the second lesson plan. On this one, you're going to turn it in, but I'm only grading the lesson plan that's due next week. But you're turning in both lesson plans. So next week, you're going to have, let's say, three sheets of paper. You're going to have the grade sheet and two lesson plans. And it's going to be stapled right on there. And just write one and two so I know which one you're grading. Yes. Yes, yes. Because just think that you have to give this to someone else and they have to try and teach from it. Question over here. A brand new one. Okay. Yeah, so you're leaving this class having created two lesson plans, but only one is being formally graded. But I'm going to see, I'm going to give you credit that you turned two in. Does that make sense? And hand draw your diagrams. Don't don't worry about the whole computer stuff. You can put them on. Um, do do put them on a separate sheet if you can't squeeze them. Try and squeeze them all on one sheet so that when I scan them, it's one sheet going through. All right. Make margins big, whatever you need to do 
to get it on one sheet. All right. You do need to put your name on it, otherwise I don't know who to grade. On both lesson plans. Last questions, last questions. If you made a lot of changes on lesson plan one, if you want to uh, just three, two years to make it look easier. You don't have to. No, if you made a lot of changes on this, this lesson plan today and it's all handwritten and it's all your notes, keep it that way. That's fine. All right, you're going to remember the changes more because you hand wrote them in. Okay, so just for accountability's sake, I'm going to collect everyone's lesson plan right now. We're just going to mark off that you brought one in, and I'm going to give them right back to you at the end of the night. Please make sure your name is on it. Thank you.